What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Snowcast Sports Talk Podcast. I didn't believe it would take 57 episodes for us to win a playoff game, but God damn it, 57 <laughs> episodes. That was it. It is the last, time, the last time the Giants won a playoff game was the Super Bowl in 2011 against the Patriots. Wow. Josh, dude. you got to be good luck. You've been a Giants fan for like one year, and you've seen this team be pulled. Josh, I can't tell you how bad this team has been over the past five years. Like, I cannot I am, tell you. I am absolutely amazed by what the Giants have pulled off. And I just had a thought yesterday after that playoff win. I just had a thought yesterday, and I was thinking, you know, I wasn't a Giants fan the season before this. And, you know, they did not do so well. I can't imagine. If this win was so good for me, I can only imagine how good it must feel for people that have been longtime fans that have seen all the crap that the Giants have gone through. And then to have a year like this, it must be what I'm feeling times two. It's, it's yeah, it's crazy. It's re it, There's really no words. It's just, it's really validating. We've said this every, we're going to sit in our awesome sauce today because we yeah, called all it, this buddy. shit. We called, <laughs> we called all it. this. We called and, the record. And Daniel Jones did everything I've asked. You got, we got to pay this man. He made it, took us to the playoffs and then played his best game in his career a, in a playoff game in a hostile environment in Minnesota and won the game. Wow. So wait, in what way was it his best game of his career? So the pressure is the first thing I'm going to think about. A playoff game, everything's a little faster. Everything's notched right. up a little bit. And if you're going, the Giants, they're a low, lower seed, so they have no home games. So they're in Minnesota. The Vikings play in a dome, so sound in there bounces off like crazy. Right. right. So it's already, it feels hostile. To keep your composure, he didn't make one bad pass. He was the first quarterback in NFL history to throw for 300 yards, two touchdowns, and rush for 70 yards in a playoff game. First quarterback in NFL history to do it. Wow. What a game. Now that right there, that little line, that's that that convinces me. Yeah, that was so, got to be one of his best performances. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go through the 13-minute game. So let me go over to this, and we're going to break it down a little bit. But before we do it, Josh, you got to watch this game. I actually did. I got to watch this game. I went to, uh, it was a playoff game. I knew that if we didn't win this game, the season would be over. I have to find a way to watch this game. So I went and I hung out with my dad and my brother and we went to a local uh, bar, like a wing bar. And we had wings, we had pizza, we watched the whole damn game. Actually, um, but I actually went out to get, this isn't super important, but I actually missed the first few minutes of the game. And so when I joined, it, uh, the 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 Giants had just scored their second touchdown, and it was 7-14, and that's when I started watching. So I've missed the first bit of the first quarter, but I watched all the rest of the game. That's all so, right. That's okay. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I love that you have football to with. Uh, you have people to watch football with. Here's the question: yeah. How does your family feel about you rooting for the Giants? What's that? <laughs> it's it's out of the ordinary. But my brother Randy, he's a hardcore Cowboys fan, but he said he's rooting for the Giants tonight. He said he said uh, he's a Giants fan for tonight. He's a Giants fan Hell until yeah. we face the Cowboys. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hey, you know, it's funny. The NFC East teams, I think the Giants are really only bitter rivals with the, the Eagles. The Eagles. That He hates the Eagles, yep. so he said I'm really rooting for the Giants for next uh, Yeah, cuz we're going to be we're going to be playing the Eagles for a third time. It's yeah, going to be crazy. So it's going to be crazy. Um, yeah. That's awesome, though. I'm glad you got to watch it. And it's it's kind of sad because you're going to see the first couple minutes of this game were wild. And with that, let's jump into it. Giants-Vikings playoff game. So this is the first drive. Josh, you can see my screen okay? I can. So the Vikings have an awesome offense, and we're going to see that offense play well. So with the Vikings, they're built in a, their team works in a way that the offense is so good and the defense isn't very good. So they always win, but by a very small margin. But you can see the run game, pass game. The Vi This is the beginning yeah. of the game. The Vikings got the ball first. And I'm sitting there watching. Defense has got to get a stop. I know. you got to start. Ooh. But that play right there is a good play. This wide receiver, Justin Jefferson, best wide receiver in the NFL. He had the most catching yards, like the most receiving yards. He's the best. Wow. And you can Number see, one. You can see what they're doing. They're tackling him hard. So every time he catches the like ball, it. look at this tackle. <laughs> An unnecessarily hard tackle. And the I think the Giants were going to do that. So then, still first drive. That was a catch. That was a great catch. Yeah, that 
that was good. That was good. Uh, yeah, so frustrating. First drive, they're already in the red zone. Yeah, this would piss me off if I saw Oh, it was slide. tough. This is third down and three. Get the stop here. Nope. Dang, dude. I, I would be like, gosh, damn. I'm nervous, dude. Good. Opening of the game, good. I'm nervous. Yeah. So then second and goal, they just push Kurt in. <sighs> so it's 7 nothing. So can I say something about this? So I was actually, remember, um, I went out to go get some food before coming back to the bar. Yep. So while I was out, I knew the game had already started. So at that time, I was at, I was waiting for the food to be cooked, and I checked the score. And I was like, damn, it's already 7-0 seven seven against yeah. the Vikings? I was pissed, and I was I hadn't even come back to watch the game yet. But I was already like, god dang, you know? It's Very already barely begun, and we're already behind. So I, I checked on my phone, but... I yeah, it's frustrating. It. And you know, the thing we talked about and I talked about was the defense had to show up this game. And to be honest, they didn't really show up until the end, which put more pressure on Daniel Jones, which makes his performance even better, in my opinion. But Vikings go right down. So what do the Giants need to do? They need to go down and get a touchdown. Like, it's like, all right, here we go. Giants need to go do the same thing. Daniel Jones moving out of the pocket. First down. Daniel Jones, Gosh, da man. Daniel Jones's run, his legs were just absolutely ridiculous. First down and ten. Play action. Throws a dart. Ooh, beautiful pass. Darius Slayton, yeah, that was the thing about Jones, throwing or running. I mean, he looked like a top five quarterback. This game, there's no mistakes. It's just top five quarterback play. Runs out of the pocket again. Stiff arm. Wow. Gets the dude. first down against the guy who think. intercepted him the last time we played the Vikings. First down and ten. Jones. All right, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Just watch Saquon. Wow! Oh wow! <laughs> wow! Look at him. First Turn drive. On Let's jet, go. Bro. That's what I'm talking. That that will get you pumped right there. Oh, look at him. What, what were you gonna say though? I dude, didn't mean to cut you off. I, I would no. It's okay. I was gonna say that Daniel Jones. He's not like the fastest guy, but he's really smart about when to run. I think. He like knows when to do it and where to go. Basically. And he's also he faster. He's faster than players give him credit for. I think he always surprises guys on how fast he can move out of the pocket and up to the up to the line of scrimmage and to the first down marker. But I think it's his stride because yeah. it doesn't look like he's moving fast, but his stride is huge. He's faster than people give him credit for. I, I'm gonna yeah. say, but yeah, what a drive! What a drive! Right back down the field. Right back down the field. So now it's third and one. We got to get a stop here. We got to get a stop. Vikings doing some trickery. God. And it didn't work. It Take didn't them work. for a ride, boys. <laughs> Just sit down. Sit down. What a buddy. silly play. So an interesting thing here about this play. So Kirk Cousins, the quarterback for the Vikings, he's a statue. He's not fast. And watch when the play happens. Kirk Cousins can't throw the ball when it gets thrown back to him because right here, that's a forward pass. If it was a backwards pass, Cousins could take it and throw it. So once Cousins catches it, he's a running he back. He has to run. He he's has so to run. slow. And he's just, he's like a five foot five white guy. He's going to get destroyed. What's he doing? <laughs> like, why are they doing this to him? Going to get destroyed. <laughs> and we stop him. So we get the ball back. First and 10. The play oh, calling, man. the what play calling play. was amazing. The problem what is, a play. our offensive coordinator is going to get a job. He'll get a head coaching job because he called a masterful game. And then Saquon, wow, ooh, ooh. <laughs> wow, damn, I missed that. I didn't see that play because I hadn't. Here, come we'll back go back. Yet. Wow, <sighs> jeez, man, I Saquon, don't see freaking a boom right like around him. So now. We're down at the ten wow. yard. We're down at the ten yard line. First down and ten. <gasps> Touchdown. So shit. So this is right when I came back. Yeah, I came yeah. back and I started watching the game right here. Dude, remember like, Hodgins? We crap, signed him week six. That's his fifth touchdown for us. Week six. Now the Giants did get away with something. Watch the false start. Watch Thomas. He jumps before the ball. And this guy right here, he's looking at the ref being like, yo, what about the flag? But they never threw it. So we got lucky, but that's still a freaking strike from Daniel Jones. That's a freaking strike. Amazing. But we did get one from the refs there. But 
We're going to see my boy Kayvon get held a few times and no flag, so it kind of evened out, and the refs, I think, knew that. So now you're watching, 14-7. Right. Why did the Vikings run more? The run game was destroying us. Every time they ran, it was for at least seven yards. Third down and three. They're not yeah. even going to run. They're looking to throw. Pressure's Ooh. coming. Ooh. Get the ball back. 14-7. to seven. Good. Great throw. That was a third down and seven, by the way. I mean, that was a third and seven. <laughs> yeah, that was a third and seven. Oh, my God. Jones gets a free play. Oh, wow. Wow. Taking advantage. His legs were awesome. I know. It's like he's this guy's just waiting to get paid. He just knows. Again, moves out of the pocket. Look at how fast he is. 94 he is couldn't even catch him, dude. Fast, he, gets, he, gets, he gets cooking, and he's fast. <laughs> he's not athletic, and he's not quick, but if he can run in a straight line, no one's catching him. Second down and six. I honestly just wanted the field goal here. I wanted to go up by two scores. I was like, just get the field goal, go up by 10, because then the Vikings have to do a lot more to get back in. Design run for Jones. And it works. I can't... Wow, look at him cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, Insane, dude. Insane. Like, again, it reminds me of the Colts game, Josh, we just watched a few weeks ago. Like, DJ puts the team on his back. Third and five. Get the first down. Now, sadly, they won't show the penalty. You can see they got backed up. Yeah, and then yeah. and then they didn't get it. So now they have to kick the field goal. And that was a yeah. eight minute drive. And only to end it with It was. Three, it was huge. And yeah, and only to end with three points. That's tough. But again, I was okay with it. Go it's, up by two. It's time on the clock. You yeah, know? Exa exactly, Josh. And this is an explosive offense. Our defense was playing this zone coverage. Watch Hawkinson. He is right here. Here. I'll show it again. So the zone coverage. So basically these guys aren't going to follow players. They're going to stand in their zones. And then as right. players move, they are responsible for new guys. Hawkinson's right here. He's always good against us. He's going to go up and over. Look at how open he is. That was eating us alive. That was, but yeah. number 18, the wide receiver, we took him out of the game. So this guy had to kill us. So two minutes left. Second and 12. Him again. Second and 12. You got to win that down. It was The defense here was yeah. frustrating me. Because the yeah, Vikings, the Vikings, they're 11 and 0 in one score games. That means every time it's a one score game, they win. So if they can get back in this game, which. They do. They do. We go into halftime 14 to 7. Or 14 they're 17. A, they were 11 and 0. For a, with a one score game at the halftime? No, just at the end of the game. If the game was by one score, they won it. Oh, okay. okay. So third down and three. Saquon, baby. I love getting Saquon in the pass game. I, I know, Josh, we watch these replays really quick. We don't see them do this a lot. And it's about time. Saquon's not just a running back, he can be a wide receiver. Do they keep him lined up? Yeah, so he's lined up here. So watch him. He's going to just run through and go over. And this guy is too late to catch up. It's just, it's a great play. You know what? Uh, actually, Randy, he said uh, at some point, he said, I'll take uh, Saquon for, instead of our running back. Yeah, Ezekiel Elliott. Now. Yeah, he's like, I'll <laughs> take Saquon instead of Ezekiel. <laughs> yeah, I would too. This is another this great year with that play, though. I thought he gave up a little early. He seemed like he wasn't trying hard enough. No, I don't think so. I think well, he's look just. Look at the play then. Look at the play. This play? Let's look at the play. No, the, the not him, not Saquon. I'm talking oh, about the next oh, one. Oh, the next one? Yeah, they talked about that one, actually. No, was, yeah, so first of all, I want to talk about Daniel Jones. Watch him move through the pocket so he finds clear space, and now people yeah. think he's going to run, and instead he throws it to Hodgins, who, by the way, he bobbled it there. So Hodgins is trying to get the ball secure. And then right Still, here. he's got it, and now he, like, gives up. He's like, oh, I'm just going to run, stop running and run out of bounds. What, dude? You were right there. Why didn't you Fair. hustle? Fair. That's a good point. That's a good point. But in the end, it doesn't matter because we got Daniel Bellinger, our rookie tight end back. Let's go. <laughs> what a great play. And I, I guess I'm, I'm going to cut a little bit here. I just want to show this play. Um, where was it? Yeah. Watch this play. This was one of the play calls. Look at how wild this looks. Ready? This is from License yeah. Plate Guy. Shout out to him. This is one of the plays during that drive. Watch this. 
Oh, dude, that was amazing. What a cool, look at this shit. Dude, that was cool, <laughs> dude. I was like, whoa. whoa dude, it didn't go for a whole lot, but the play call was cool. So I just wanted to go back to that to show it. But Daniel Bellinger, oh, yeah. this is a great play call. And Daniel Jones, just the way he moves through the pocket. Oh, my God. It's just, it's all so smooth. Mike Kafka called a great game. Like I said, he's going to be a head coach next year, which sucks because. Means we're losing him? Yeah, because he already interviewed with the Panthers and the Cardinals. Or the Texans and the Panthers. So he's not going to be our offensive coordinator anymore. He though. might not, but I said in the last podcast, Brian Dable's the guy we want to keep, and he's our head coach. So I trust Dable to bring in someone good because he's unleashed Daniel Jones. Yeah. So now we're up 24-14. Oh, and the pressure was so close there. That was actually a good play call and a great play by the Vikings. That The pressure was close there, but we got to get a stop. Third down and seven. And they get it, dude. They kept converting these big third downs. Just tough. Just really, really tough. Yeah, really tough. Again, Kirk Cousins looking to throw. Look at... Oh. They're just moving down the field at will on us. They're just moving down the field. Yeah. And th th this was what I was scared of. During the game, I'm, I'm not excited. We're up by 10, but our defense... They just can't seem to get anything going. It feels like a close game, yeah, still. And it's and... like, it's like, what's our defense going to do? Like, we have to stop them. Like, we have to. So, and you know what Liv said to me this morning? Like, she was like, Billy, we were always winning. Like, we never fell behind. But I was still nervous. Because I just knew the Vikings' play style. Yeah. This team doesn't die until the clock says 0-0. Zero, zero. Like, they just don't die. So, Daniel Jones, third and one. What an... Effort by Brita. He's that, been that awesome all year. I thought that was a huge play. A huge play, like, Josh. Dude. And we always give Brita his credit. We always are like, damn, this guy's a good running back. Like when Saquon's not right. there, Brita's good. So here we go. And they finally get him. They finally get the sack. So we have to give the ball yeah, back. I don't know if we passed it already, but there was at some point that uh, Daniel Jones went for a quarterback sneak and is like, back, it's going it's to come backwards. up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. They that should was... show it. Yeah. So now they have the ball back. And again, they get the they're getting these first downs. They're marching down the field. Third down and two. So we don't bring a blitz. But you can see Kayvon's getting held a lot. There's a lot of plays where Kayvon, but again, they convert. So they're moving yeah. down the field. There's Kayvon again. Yeah. Catch it. So now it's fourth. And it's going to be fourth down. And so we have to stop them here, I believe. Yeah, they go for it on fourth down. And they get it. Ooh, man, but what an effort yeah, to what hold a hit. on to the ball yeah. after that hit. Uh, uh, Hawkinson's awesome. He's a good tight end for the Vikings. Uh, Rose's, Rose, Rose's husband is a big Vikings fan. I know. They're, yeah, they're she both, was, they she, live in Minnesota. She was responding to my tweets, and we were kind of chatting about oh, Only respectful. I was like, hey. All right, fourth down. They do the sneak, and it works. That's another fourth down they get. But there was a flag. False start by the Vikings. So it gets backed up. So the Vikings can only kick the field goal. As you saw, you know this, but just for the people listening. So now they only can tie the game. And they get it. It was close, though. I was like, ah! But they get it. So now 24-24, 12 minutes left. Giants got to go down here and get some points. Darius Slayton, man. He had that big drop at the end, which I bet they'll show. Oh, but, I know. He felt bad yeah, about but that. But he played a good game. He had some nice catches. This is a great play. Richie James. He's really uh, recovered from all those fumbles against Seattle all those weeks ago. He's been awesome. Oh, yeah. And hopefully we'll, we'll we'll get to the drop pass. Later yeah, on yeah. And I want to say something about that. So Saquon, uh, oh my God, best throw by Jones of the night. Can you believe that was a catch? I that impressive. Yeah, Let's look at how he again. moves out of the pocket. Oh my what God! What a freaking throw! And what a catch by Hodgins. Both. Let's see if they show it. They probably won't, but it was a catch. And it was an insane catch. But the Giants got up to the line and got the playoff. Second down and 10. Give the ball to Saquon. Look at the block by Kenny Galladay. I know Kenny Galladay has been a huge disappointment. Watch this block. Kenny's right here. Watch the block. <laughs> Ready? To, to be Pummels fair. Him. That, that's true. But to be fair, the defender slipped and fell. Still, I love, I love that Kenny <laughs> did it. 
And then they don't get it oh. right there. That's where they don't get it. That was short. And so now yeah. I, th I think we're about to see Daniel Jones break his spine for this team. Oh, God. Yeah, I, right I, here. That looked nasty. Ooh. He, like, got Ooh, he, he got it, though. He got though. it, though. He got a, it. That's a tough. I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to say it. That's, was, a, that's a tough motherfucker. I'm just going to say it. And then Saquon gets tackled and just isn't denied. He runs all the way in. Go ahead, Josh. I can't I'm sorry. believe it. Um, well, I was just happy to see Daniel Jones get up after that. <laughs> Me play. too. Me uh, too. But it's a playoff <laughs> game. You put your body on the line. Yeah. There's nothing to play for. Third and, down you know, and Barkley 12. shouldn't have made that touchdown, but he did because he, you know, somebody was holding him, but he got through anyway. He did. And then we stop him on third down. Yeah. All we had to do Huge. here was burn the clock. But, of course, in Giants fashion, we're going to see the infamous pass. First of all, it's a great catch by that Barkley. Good yeah, God. Absolutely. Barkley was awesome. He never had a lot of rush yards, but in the pass game, he was a badass. So then second down, and I think they hold Barkley up. Yeah, they stop him right there. Yep. They stopped him, which was wild. Good for the defense. That was pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. Fourth down. Fourth and one. Daniel Jones it. again just gets his, his back cracked. Dude, it's so dangerous to do that. It, it, it's a playoff game, man. It's a playoff game. Now here we go. Third down and 15. And if Slayton catches this, all he has Dude. is green grass. It would have yeah, been the it's game. It's over. Right Game's there. Over he would have been right there. That. And he didn't catch it. Dude. And it hit him right in the chest. It was a great bro. throw by Danny. It was a great throw. And I know Slayton, he felt so bad about he this. Did. I just want to say something about that play. Yeah, go um, ahead. So of course. When he was when he was uh, on the sideline, he was destroyed. We could see that he was absolutely destroyed. But what I loved to see was Brian Dable came up to him and like lifted his chin up. And it was just a touching moment to see him like physically bring his chin up and be like, "It's okay, we're, we're it's all right," you know. It, it's like, man, dude, he has such a connection with this player. He's you know, he's the best coach in the NFL. He's coach of the year. He's the I best. I think coach. he should be. He's the and, best. And coach. I haven't seen. We'll we'll talk about coach of the year after this. Yeah, but and, <laughs> and you know, Saquon went over to him too, and that's a hell of a captain to go over and and Brian Dable. We won't watch it on here, but if I'll show it to you, Josh. He talked about it, and he told Slayton, you're one of our best players. We need you here. We need you to keep your head up. We need to win this game. But, hey, exactly. you know what the thing was? It was time for the defense to fucking show out, okay? I'm mm -hmm. sorry. That's two swears on a podcast, but it was time for the defense to show out. And there oh. you go. That's a stop. And now I want to see the play Great where stuff. cave on. By the way, that was roughing the passer. That was. BS. I thought that, that was the most BS call I I have seen the whole game. Hey, but you know what? We got roughing. that we got that false start call. So I was I I had to be okay with this, but yeah, I mean, all he does is wrap him. And Dexter Lawrence is such a beast, dude. He's been so good. This was completely fair. Yeah, he what, let go even. Let him How do a dodge roll. Him? What is the logic on that? It's just the I refs. don't understand. It's just the refs being stupid. I want to see this play though. Ugh, there's Hodgins again, dude. That's Hodgins again. Or, or not Hodgins, uh, Hawkinson. That tight end. Show me third down and eight. So here's third down. Dude, Cordell Flott. That, I was amazing. The I was like, rookie, dude. Josh. Remember I how unexcited yes. we were about him? Yes, I remember. We called him like super tiny and skinny and shit. I remember. Badass, that. dude. I love yeah. seeing it. <laughs> Fear the Flott. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Comes through with the playoff play. Fourth down. What are you doing throwing it three yards out? And then McKinney. Yeah, I can't believe it. That I, I was like, dude. First that's, playoff that's win the game. for the that's Giants. The that's the game. It was the... Insane. Dude. Insane. I can't believe it, man. Crazy. They must all be so happy. They were. So, a couple, <laughs> couple fun tweets. So, here's one. Uh, shout out to... James. So the Giants... Uh, here, let me click on the picture. So the Giants have been all or nothing in the playoffs. 2002, lost to San Francisco. 2005, lost to the Panthers. 2007, lost to the Eagles. Or 2006. 2007, when they win a playoff game, they go all the way to the Super Bowl and win. Yeah. 2008, they lose. 2011, go all the way to the Super Bowl and win when they win one game. And we just won <laughs> one game, so everyone's like... All the way. <laughs> Are we going to do it? So I thought that was a cool one. And then yeah. the other thing was Nick Gates. Nick Gates came out and said before the game, like last week, he said, oh, yeah, it's not that loud there. So the Vikings kept showing this on the Jumbotron. 
Nick Gates said, I thought when our defense was out there, they would be a, a lot louder out there. Um, their mindset people, they're too nice. Midwest. They're Midwest people, sorry. And so oh, the crowd would start screaming. And at the end of the game, this is what Nick Gates was doing. <laughs> <laughs> And then finally, uh, just this Daniel Jones. So first player in all time with a 300-yard passing game, two touchdowns, and 70-yard rushing in a postseason game. First ever. I can't believe that that's the first time that's ever happened. Ever. And so playoff game. the New York amazing. Giants won a playoff game. And it, it still hasn't completely sunk in. Um, yeah, we can talk about coach of the year for a second. Brian Dable might be the best coach in the NFL. He just might be. I'm just, I'm just I think he should it. be in the talks for the best coach of the year, but I've heard that he's not really in talks. Oh, no, he, like is. A, he is. No, he th- is. They are now with this playoff win. He, he's done the most with the least amount of talent and money. I mean, Josh, remember all the cap space we had to talk about at the beginning of this year, all the players? We had to cut James Bradbury because we just couldn't afford him. And, True. And Brian Dable's gotten all this out of his guys. Wink Martindale, Mike Kafka. Um, but we are going to see, with good coaching, we're going to lose coaches. Where I don't think Wink will get a coaching job, Mike Kafka is a young, talented guy. And just like Brian Dable on the Bills got the job with the Giants, it would not shock me if Kafka is the coach of the Panthers or the coach of the Texans. Um, so we will see. I hope by God he stays because he knows what he is doing. Um, and yeah. he called a great game yesterday. Um, and it was just exciting, and I'm happy for Giants fans. And, you know, Daniel Jones has been through a lot, and we've all been through a lot, but Daniel Jones is the franchise quarterback. It, 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 if you don't think so, be be a, uh, a Chiefs fan. Just go root for Patrick Mahomes because you obviously want a quarterback that does gymnastics all day and spins around like he's a clown. Um, when you want to watch a real quarterback play, Daniel Jones is a real quarterback. Um, so... I don't know, Josh. If you have any other you're, anything, so you're else on the to... you're on the full. I said Daniel it. I said Jones. it. I said it at the beginning of the year in podcasts with you with guests by myself. I said Jones has to go win a playoff game, and then he's our quarterback, and he's done more than that. He didn't win a playoff game. He was the only. He was the biggest factor in the playoff game. It was all him. It's true. Uh, I would agree with that. I think uh, we should uh, re up his contract. Uh, I think he's proven himself. Already, even if we lose against the Vikings, I mean, against the Eagles. the Eagles, even if we lose against the Eagles, still, I think he's proven that he has a hell of a lot going for him. He's got a lot to offer the Giants in future seasons. He might and only get better. He might only get better. And uh, segueing into the Eagles game. Yeah, we should talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you, it's it's a long shot to win that game. I think it's a long shot. But it's also very hard to beat the same team three times. And this is the third time the Eagles are playing us. And if you, at some point, the highlights, the last time we played the Eagles, we benched all of our starters. A day will listen to you. And the Eagles only beat us by six points. And we were playing our third stringers. My goodness, And the Giants are hot now. They're feeling good. So even if we lose, I just want to see a competitive game. We're the... Were the Eagles also playing their benched people? No, they were playing their starters because they were playing for the one seed. Because if they had lost that game and the Cowboys won, then the Eagles would not have had a bye week. They would have had to play tonight. Because the Eagles, since they're the best team, they don't have to play till next week. They're literally all home. They didn't have to play this weekend. Just like the Chiefs. Chiefs did not have to play this weekend. Wow. Well, it's a long shot to come over and, and, and beat the Eagles. It's a long uh, shot. It's a long shot. It, gotta get but it was it was a long shot to win this game. It was. I mean, you know what? The, they're the team, uh, the Vikings. What were they? Thirteen, 14 and thirteen, 13 and three. And, thirteen and three. Dude. And the Eagles were fourteen and two. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So a nine, seven, and one team being beating a thirteen and three. Crazy. Or there's there's seventeen games in the regular season. Yeah, now, but every, so everyone has a bye week. So there's 18 weeks, 17 games. Yeah, exactly, yep, yep. exactly. Sorry, so I, yeah, I got confused. It, there. it should it should add up. It should add up to 17. So 13 and three only adds up to 16. So it's and be 13, thir- and, four to, 13 and yeah, four for the 13 Vikings. and four. Yeah. yeah, 13 and four. Um, so anyway, point is, it it was a long shot to do that against a team that had that kind of a record. We did it. 
Um, and uh, although I know it's going to be a very tough game, I remain confident. Yeah, that you gotta, uh, you gotta. I, I remain confident in our team and our ability, and, and our coaches, and our coaches, and our I'm coaches. Confident too. in my coach. I'm confident in Dable. I'm confident in Kafka. Let's see what those guys go do before Absolutely. anything else, because they're the real deal. And it's amazing. This time last year, we were sitting talking about the draft, talking about firing Joe judge and all, all this stuff that uh, it's just amazing what a year has done. Um, so crazy. I, I, I'm sure there's more on my mind, but Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, Brian Dable, Joe Shane, these guys, they're badasses and they're giants, hopefully for life. I, um, but yeah, I think the improvement that has happened over this last year, it, almost solely falls on the shoulders of Brian Dable and Joe Shane. Joe Shane Them because, two together, yeah. yeah. Joe Shane finding a guy like Isaiah Hodgins to be wide receiver one for the Giants is pretty ridiculous. But then a guy like Brian Dable, you know, getting Daniel Jones and Isaiah and Barkley and Bellinger, these guys to play the way they're playing, I mean, that's the coach. That is the coach. So I... Honestly, I just can't wait for next uh, the next, next game Saturday eight fifteen <laughs> Sat- Saturday, Saturday eight fifteen so oh, yeah gonna I be exciting to that one too. so it's gonna be it's gonna be I awesome can't wait <laughs> and you know I just really wanted to win a playoff game so it's awesome to just get yeah. one win get one playoff win um, always awesome so uh, but guys I want to thank you for listening to the podcast checking out I'm sure we missed a couple things I, honestly it's just exciting to be where we are and I hope all of you guys who are Giants fans just enjoy this moment and um, you know it, it I said last last podcast it doesn't always come you know we lost a playoff game in 2016 and I thought the future was bright and it was possibly the worst five years in Giants history so you know enjoy these moments and you, you just never know you know you're not always guaranteed mm-hmm. a playoff spot and it's just awesome that the Giants got all this and um, something we can hang our hat on. And um, I'm just looking forward to next week. And, you know, we just take it one week at a time. Um, if you guys haven't checked out Josh, uh, all of his links will be down below for his channel, Nightwind Archer. Um, he does Skyrim and Dragon Age playthroughs. So please give him a sub. Let him know we appreciate him being here with us and being a hardcore Giants fan and watching the game. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you all on the next one. Go Go Giants! Giants.